guys, Dan the Wolfman here. here. Thank you for checking out my videos. Go to thecombatsystem.com for all your mixed martial arts needs. And please subscribe to my YouTube page. Make sure to go to thecombatsystem.com and subscribe to my YouTube page. Cat Cats. Counting me. And it was a good time. Thank you very much. Thank for you. Thank um, for helping me. Uh, make sure to subscribe to this guy's uh, channel, Dan the Wolfman. Uh, you respect the game, man. You know the game. You know what you're talking about. And uh, yeah, uh, you're pretty credible. Well, thank you, sir. Hey guys, welcome to my live Aki Grappling vs. MMA BJJ video. Aikido Sistema TMA Concepts in Jiu-Jitsu. I'm Dan the Aki Grappler, or aka Dan the Wolfman. I'll be using Kodagishi, Nikio, Sankyo from Aikido and other standing locks like elbow cranks, waki gatami, and two-on-one elbow breaks. This is Sistema and TMA Concepts of Looseness, Sensitivity, Structure, and Rooting. Intercepting and stealing their intention with the hands. Biomechanics manipulating the head, neck, and spine. Going from a chi out or distracting hands matrix. Watch my distracting hands Poirier vs. Khabib video. My used in UFC anti-cage tactics video. And there's many more Aki grappling examples and my more real new Steven Seagal vs. MMA grapplers video. Check those out. This will be against pro MMA fighters, jiu-jitsu and wrestling guys, and bigger guys. So stay tuned. Here this guy is a pro MMA fighter, pancreas fighter in Japan, and a BJJ blue belt. The loose hands allow the intercepting of the head. I saw that. Allow the cross face neck crank. Simply with a the loose hands allow the rotation of the spine. Redirecting his breaking his structure. Into structure spins him spirally. Hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe. Thank you. Okay. So the audio might be a second or two. Um, delayed or after i apologize for that guys this guy i believe he was a pro fighter by this time uh in japan at brave gym here 2014 standing oval crank people say it would never work on anything good you know, all my haters online because they're no good this guy has done judo like 36 years i believe training with two-time olympian koga see the elbow crank there couldn't get the tap but could take him down with the head tilt systemo biomechanics <laughs> Back to the uh, blue belt pro fighter, smaller guy, yes, but I lock his elbow by pushing out his face. That was actually an elbow lock, a straight arm bar. Here's a bigger pro uh, fighter from deep, much bigger than me, with MMA gloves on. And there's a Kodagaishi. Didn't quite get him, caught his base, lowered his head, so snap him down to the 10 finger guillotine. And managed to get on top, and shortly thereafter, I tapped him with a reverse toe hold. This, these are from these another. These are uh, Pancrase fighters, pro fighters. These are guys are very good grapplers. People see this, and go, oh, those guys are no good. They're white belts. No, you're wrong. Those are idiots online. Aki grappling. My my Nikyo variation there. I think it has a different name in Japanese jujitsu. Maybe in Daito Ru or uh, certain ninjutsu Ru's. Um, whether or not that is true Nikki or not, but that's how I do it with two hands in control. Really, do I actually put it up on my shoulder and chest? So those clips here were some of the ones that first kind of blew up guys and made a short video, and then I made that second video. Make sure you check it out. The more real new Stephen Skull vs. MMA Grapplers video. Because um, that shows a lot of examples, and I'm just showing the stuff I've done in the last like year and a half that didn't get put into that video. Here's sparring a uh, pro fighter, the AACC in Tokyo. We're a former pro fighter. I think he had stopped fighting at this time, but like me, I haven't fought in a long time, but still training. Russian two-on-one elbow breaker with boxing gloves on. I could have broken his elbow there, taken him down. This guy's a wrestling coach and a BJJ blue belt. I was already a BJJ black belt at this time, but he was a very good wrestler, uh, you know, wrestling coach. And we're going uh, takedowns uh, plus 10 seconds with submissions, standing elbow crank. He had never seen that before. Asked me to teach him. Here's going with a student here. I was 218 at the time, I believe, 240 pound, and I'm going one-handed. I could have broken his elbow right there with the Waki Gatami one-handed and hitting the knee bar one-handed. 240-pound older guy, but uh, blue, gel, blue belt firefighter, pretty good shape. Going one-handed, you see him grabbing my gi back there. So one-handed versus a bigger guy. Kind of an Osoto Gwari there. 
and then watch a kind of an interesting finish here guys using sensitivity biomechanics is a lot about what I talk about Is he a top jujitsu pro? No, but here I'm doing it one-handed because I might get injured in a gunfight or a fight or cut with a blade. It's my student. Um, and there you saw Kodageishi, Kodageishi to Jujigatami Armbar. This guy was supposedly like an amateur fighter. I was trying him out for the first second here. This is the very first seconds going with him. And yes, I'm bigger, but again, Collar tie wrestling shoulder shrug to Akito or Daito Ru Kodagaish to Jujigatami Armbar. Nikio. Nikio variation. Elbow control there. It's like Ikio pin. And Akito or Daito Ru to the Armbar. Again. Throw oh, no, he's work smaller. In That's why. Well, can never work in a, in a real competition, right? Except that's where it was. There it was. Well, there it was. This is posted by, I'm going to butcher his name, my new Norwegian friend, Stale Nyang. Stale Nyang. Norwegian guy. Said, well, in order to pull this off live, I asked him, like, uh, some questions and... Yep, he was a black belt in some kind of kung fu system, and I believe now a black belt in BJJ. But more importantly, I said, you really bounced before and really put people up on their toes. He said, yeah, really, without really throwing them, just like I've talked about many times. So he had real live experience bouncing. He served in the military in Bosnia. So this guy um, was able to pull it off live. And then I'll see if I can find a clip of Roly Delgado Del doing Del the same. Delgado, uh a Hayastan and BJJ guy, just like myself, did it in competition, Kodagishi, right to an ankle lock, guys, uh, but my camera broke, so I couldn't get that footage. Here I'm going with a guy for the first time who had uh, said he had wrestled for eight years. And of course, I've wrestled and done jiu-jitsu and everything, too. <laughs> Please don't think that I'm just a kung fu or TMA or a keto guy or something. No, live training means that I can use the fancy wrestling. Um, but you see him kind of working from a chi style matrix, and because of the loose hand, I was able to down block. I was able to down block his head and shove it to the mat right away. So he went lower than he even expected. Same thing you can do from distracting hands in the Dustin Poirier vs. Khabib distracting hands video. I call that my Bakwa style Tai Chi push ball takedown or Kosoto Dogaki in Judo. But that's because he was smaller. Well, here's a bigger guy. Now, basically a beginner, a uh, karate guy, I think Shokan background. Um, same takedown, right? So again, guy, he's using sensitivity. Go to Geesh, taking down a bigger guy. There's like two... Uh, I'm not sure how much I weighed at this time. It was lighter than I am now. I think it was 218 still. Maybe 225, but I think it was still 218 still, and he was like 250 something. Jack in the box on the head. You don't know what that is? You need to watch my anti cage tactics video. Tapped him out standing with another standing lock. That was the jaw popper standing, Dan Severn special. My first famous UFC coach. Using no hands here, you see that I'm kind of just using biomechanics and structure, my spine, rooting of the feet, and there my shoulder to block it, block him from getting in on me. And now I'm doing uh, Pinocchio, there are no strings on me defense. Women need to learn this for self-defense. If you're loose, like a bag of rice and fold over someone, it's very hard for them to lift you. If you use muscular tension, you make your body one unit and they can pick you up and, and drag you to their car much easier than if you cycle your body weight. Oh, 
Okay, here, going with the 240 pound uh, football player, young guy, beginner, student of mine. And in the beginning here, I'm using some real power, uh, and I kind of talk about it if you can hear both the audios, not sure. So, I am using a bit of power at first, and so you can hopefully see the difference. Now, if you're low level or heaven trained, maybe you can't really see the difference. But the people that have trained the most can really see when it's just loose sensitivity awareness. Another Kodagaishi. Outward wrist twist. Again, uh, I'm like 240 now, but at the time, this year, year and a half ago or more, I was 218. He was 240. Very athletic, as you see him get off the ground a couple times and whatnot. You know, dreams of going to NFL someday. Kazushi. Use their momentum. So this isn't really Aki grappling yet. It kind of starts with more basic stuff, guys. And then you'll see me go softer here. See no arms. But what do you notice? What is strong? My spine. Hopefully you've realized that by now. Strong spine, strong delivery system. Looseness. Unlockable and you find stuff. Like that. Look at my real street jiu-jitsu and combatives video. You'll see me do that a lot to other people. The way I just locked him standing. We unfortunately a lot of jiu-jitsu, Brazilian jiu-jitsu people have uh, forgotten and, and couldn't really do. Float my hips. Intercepting, see the arm? That's what I would talk, uh, a good example that I didn't put in the, and there's some jack-in-the-box vibrations on the spine which takes them down, go behind to the hammerlock, catch jiu-jitsu style there. Something I didn't, I didn't even use that example, which is a perfect example of what I was teaching in the That's Distracting strong. Hands, Dustin yeah. Poirier vs. Khabib video. Yeah. So check that out. Yeah. Oh, I can use power hooks yeah. here, and then look at the tightness to my shoulder. You don't you think he could get out of that, he couldn't. <laughs> Connection to my shoulder, and the softness here, the same two-on-one elbow breaker you saw on the pro guide during the kickboxing spot earlier. I want to show him I can be strong too, so I root and shove with a little internal push there. Come all the way back to the cage fencing uh, padding there. And then loose to explosion there. We're kind of an uh, outward leg reap or so over there. For Bruce Lee, enter the dragon. Bruce Lee story fans here. There's some, there's some Aikido for you. I think that would be a song, Kyo. Live against a bigger guy. See how things can present themselves. If you're loose and you have sensitivity, which a lot of people are missing. Even a lot of the Aikido people I see don't really have much Aki. So, oh, I said, tell me what style to do. He said drunken, drunken master style. So look, how I just flowed into what is really a sag Headlock there, just using my weight. Loose body weight. Look at that counter. Oh, but he's a beginner. Yeah, but most people can't do this to a bigger, stronger, more athletic, younger guy. Um, the point is kind of what I'm doing with, with softness. Not that you know, other BJJ people kind of tap them out, but I'm not doing it in that fashion. Now I'm doing drunken masters. Why are you choking me? I roll on my back and I hit a top wrist lock key lock variation on. Oh. Tai Chi. I think of that as like Bob Law kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it'd be kind of a Kosoto Gaki in Judo or even Shotokan Karate uses that takedown, Miyoto Machida. I got a video of him doing that. 
what is that, another Nikio on the bigger guy? Okay, this guy is a loose, flowy uh, BJJ brown belt, and we had gone for like a really long time, so we're just tired and flowing there. Oh, no, that was Kodagishi. No, so actually, actually, we had started twice from our feet, and I did Kodagishi and Nikio to him already before filming. So before filming, I had actually already hit two, and there was another one. Um, but hard to lock off of it because he's so loose and flowy. So again, that kind of shows a good thing about the roly poly jiu jitsu style. It's good for defense for the defensively for the smaller man. Okay, look at that intercepting his center line, intercepting his intention there. No flying guillotine on me, buddy. I look doing a little keto wing chun hand down the center line. Can't get to me. And see how his base is all off, even when I'm sideways, because you might get attacked when you're sideways. You might get jumped behind a corner or a bush, right? My little teapot makes more space, so I can't get a bear hole in. Bear mechanics extending your elbow out. Loose breathing, this is very much the stem Here. Here. Back back hand. Hand. Hey, look where it was. And if I was doing distracting hands fighting the MMA, one hand's always going down, one hand's always coming up. You got something there to work on the head, neck, spine, biomechanics. So the show Kodaishi to Juji Gatami. I was a new black belt, and he was a, he's a good brown belt. Uh, very hard to tap, very flowy, can you know roll and get out of stuff. He's got pretty good sensitivity himself, but I'm still hitting. You know, these Kodagishis and Nikios on. Oh, I got my eyes closed now. Here's my Van Damme impression there. I hope someone got that. So this is eyes closed, which is very good to do. It helps you work on your sensitivity. I hope you guys are enjoying this. Ryan, I keep watching. I have all kinds of examples. Bigger, smaller pro fighters. Um, all kinds. And hopefully you can take whatever you've trained in in the past... This is eyes closed, and a little knee wheel throw. Not really a Hizagaruma, um, but an uh, old Sambo guy showed me that at Hyaston Academy once. Okay, this guy's kind of a beginner, though he's wrestled like a, a year before or something. So a little bit of wrestling, kind of self-taught. Um, just a little bit more of what I would call Aki grappling here. You know, I'm not powering through him and using superior traditional grappling against him. Here I'm doing one-legged. Why? Because I want to work on it and see what happens. Can you balance and root on one leg and still trip him? Which I did. <laughs> the focus hands controlling the center line there. Again, that kind of Nikio variation I do, two hands on one. And sometimes I'll transition one hand off to the elbow control or EQ style pin there. I know that my uh, channel has gotten a lot of the keto people uh, interested, but guys, you do got to do real randor. You got to do real judo, real wrestling, real jujitsu yeah. against decent people, guys, to be able to pull the stuff off that I'm pulling off. You know, showing some Eagle Claw Kung Fu. You still watch some Jackie Chan movies? Could I poke someone's eye out with some snake? Yeah, I probably could. I'm not trying to like really throw someone big and hurt them with major judo, but trying to use soft concepts, so kind of it. There's a over there, I guess. Oh, again, now here I messed up. See, I should have transitioned to his elbow when it was bent that much right away with my right hand, actually. So he got out of that. I should have let go when his arm was that bent. I should have transitioned. More kind of like using off balancing because you see your, your opponent's balance against you. And the suck it choke. Oh, you, the BJJ white belts and blue belts are really, like, I'd never get tapped with that. Yeah, yeah, you would. Yeah, you would. I'll tap you with a suck it choke. It's a chest choke. Center line, one hand down, right away to cross face. Just body weight straight, and cross face to defend. A lot of examples here that go with my 
Dustin Poirier versus Khabib needs distracting hands video. Look at this, Kimura slash double wrist lock variation there. Seen stuff like that quite a few times in this. Again, see my hand for the cross face? If you're static and punching heavy and stuff, it's hard to get in. But if you're loose and know how to punch in short distance and stuff, you can do anti-grappling if you're a real grappler, of course. We just saw that yet again. First line of defense, as I talk about in the other videos, first line of takedown defense is your hands. So I hope you guys are enjoying this Aki grappling video. Um, here at American Top Team Atlanta, I didn't know that he was going to go so soft with me, but it's kind of nice to start wrapping up the video with this. I don't know this gentleman if he was, he was new to school. He had trained jiu-jitsu for, I think, 14 years, he said, in San Diego and went on. San Diego's got great jiu-jitsu. Honestly, I think he was a brown belt, but he could be purple, good purple, or he could be a newer black. Or just an older block, because he's older than me. Um, so we rolled for a little while, and then we started going light. But again, here, now I'm using light concepts, and he's getting it. He's understanding it. And he's aware of the Kodagishi and stuff, so I assumed he had some JKD background or Kali background before. I think he might have. Um, sir, if you're a black belt, I, I just don't know. Uh, very well could be. He, he, you know, I'm just saying he was knowledgeable, and he had trained quite a while. And it was fun to kind of wrap up training when people are willing to do this kind of stuff and when i can tell they're intelligent enough and, and trained enough to to want to learn and to uh feel uh, i think a little while back i closed my eyes again so actually i think the last 30 40 seconds i had my eyes closed again yeah. and guys here's just a little bit towards the end um not you know the rest of it was using Aki grappling in live jiu-jitsu, live grappling versus, versus real grapplers. This is a student here, but I wanted to show how you can use this with some atemi, with some strikes. Because I think there's people out there that are still concerned about self-defense, and they want to see how you can use some of the TMA stuff they know, some of the keto that they know, um, some of the sistema that you know. How can you use the combatives that you know in a self-defense situation? Let's see what it just ran into two knees about how to play with someone's balance, how to break structure there. Take them down easily, breaking structure, off kick, breaking structure, which is a hand that just grabs them. I didn't plan a technique. I used concepts that are ingrained in my nervous system. Uh, but I thought this would be a good video to kind of include this. See the intercepting vertical punch there? I would have taken his center and just taken control of that fight with an intercepting punch right away and sweeping his base out. Oh, broken structure, hit that back. Had he really smacked the spine there? Oh, here's just gravity. Look how much pain he's in just from the gravity, the weight of my leg. And no, I wouldn't do this to most people. He's an extremely flexible student, so I knew what he was capable of. Some back sweeping action, kind of a Kazushi Waza there, if you will. Reverse chin rip here to slam the guy down on concrete or your knee, break his back. I don't know, fighting Bane, your Batman. Um, Captain Nagi there for your keto people out there. Or your head and arm spin, Sistema, Kali, Sila, they all use it. Doesn't really matter what you call martial arts. Start looking at the concepts, people. And for all you haters out there, I think I've proved there was quite a few bigger guys, quite a lot of pro fighters, quite a few decent jiu-jitsu people and judokas and wrestlers that I was elbow cranking and standing locks in this video. And earlier on the video, you saw a picture of uh, Leona Machida. Well, that was me sparring Hydro Gracie in the background of that video, if you want to replay it at the, at the intro. For the people who say I never go against bigger people, <laughs> I've sparked a lot of UFC heavyweight fighters. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm middleweight size. No opportunities. Things just happen. You just gotta adapt. Guys, I hope you enjoy it. No particular technique. You just gotta move. Please yeah. thumbs up. It Please subscribe. The order in the chaos. Thanks. And let's finish yes. up with yeah. some kung fu fighting. Sure. With Big Country Roy oh, Nelson and Anderson Silva. Yeah, Wing Chun, Chi Sao, good for sensitivity development. You don't do it every day, but every few years I get to play with somebody.
Right. That doesn't mean you get it on cork and overhand or anything. And hopefully this reminds people to keep an open mind. Okay. Hold on. I want, I want 30 seconds of Chiefs out. With, with, with really, I should have one hand on the inside. I'm kind of playing with them to make it fair. I'd have one hand on the inside, and I have a better chance of hitting them. I kind of get one in on his chest, and of course he slapped me. Good elbows, good center line. Big country could oh, be really good cool for fighting. He, me as bad as did. he had real Chi Sao skills. Steven Seagal put me in your movie, man. Guys, I'm a SAG actor and stuntman. I'm currently in Atlanta. If anyone wants to reach out, would certainly appreciate some stunt work. Here with the GOAT, Anderson Silva, one of the greatest of all times. Apparently the whole room stopped. The whole room of media, Dana White. Apparently everyone went hush and stopped while we started playing. Guys, hope you enjoyed it. Been wanting to make this video for a long time. Hope it turned out okay. Thank you so much.